Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So this morning, uh, it was an early morning for us, as usual. You, we're up with the sun. Yay. Hooray. We're, we're down with the sun, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So we did this one this morning. Uh, this was a Patreon exclusive. Warning, it's happening. And you could kind of get an idea what we're talking about uh, by the uh, little screenshot there. Lots of interesting revelations going on. Meanwhile, you have China saying it's ready to defend justice in the world with Russia. I think you know have we heard a bigger statement about what is next up i mean that's a big statement mm -hmm. china says it's ready to defend justice in the world with russia so to me that says they're ready for war in in an outright and very direct manner yeah so i mean we're we're keeping an eye on it this is a pretty big statement you know what is he saying what does he know and we know all of this is for optics uh, but what kind of optics what are they pulling together now what kind of strings are they tying together you know what signals are they sending to each other it's never just cut and dry these folks never come out and just make a statement to make a statement they come out to speak to one another in some weird way even though these are puppets on strings and this is in some ways a theater it's a theater where lives are lost and sometimes the lives are lost in the millions and if there's anything we could get from a historical perspective looking at the technology that was used in ww1 comparing that to number two and seeing you know the deaths in comparison then going to now so far uh, beyond what was done in World War II technologically with what's available, um, yeah, it's not a pretty picture at, at, in any way, shape, or form. So again, uh, it's a lot to it's a lot to absorb and to have hanging over your head on a daily basis. Hence, that's why we've been also doing a lot of the ambient music and and trying to, post as much on Heart's Home again uh, because, you know, it can be overwhelming uh, when we're in a period of war. Yeah, I mean, overwhelming is kind of an understatement. <laughs> it's, it's something where people can probably quite literally freeze, not to mention uh, trauma. You know, those who have PTSD and they hear bad news, and it could be any bad news, and I don't just mean those who have served. There's a lot of people with uh, PTSD who have gotten that through various different ways, you know, through trauma in life, through a stick-up, through having their, having their house burglarized. This kind of trauma... When, when it's activated, it can really screw you up for a couple of days. So you might see something flash on the TV and you might not sleep that night because all of a sudden your cortisol is pumping. And, and what we try to do is we try to get this information to people, but not just leave it in your lap. We try to help you cope with it. Absolutely. So moving on to the other topic, this is a statement by the uh, leader of the Houthi military, or at least the spokesperson for the Houthi military. Again, Yemen is the country that we're talking about. And so it says, in victory for the oppression of the Palestinian people in response to the crimes of the Zionist enemy against the displaced in the Rafah area. Um, he then goes on to talk about strikes and at first in the Gaza Strip and within the framework of expanding military operations in the fourth phase of escalation and in response to the American-British aggression against our country. The naval forces, the missile force, and the unmanned air force of the Yemeni armed forces with the help of God Almighty carried out six military operations as follows. The first targeted the American aircraft carrier Eisenhower in the northern Red Sea with a number of missiles and drones. Okay, so he says targeted. Targeted there. 
which is the seconding, second targeting of the carrier within 24 hours. We spoke of the first one uh, yesterday, I believe. The second targeted an American destroyer in the Red Sea and was directly hit by a number of drones. While the other four operations targeted ships belonging to companies that violated the decision to ban entry to the ports of occupied Palestine. Including the ship Mina, which was targeted by two operations in the Red Sea as well as in the Arabian Sea. The third operation targeted a ship, Alor Rake, in the Indian Ocean. Fourth operation targeted a ship Al B Al I'm sorry, Ab Liani in the Red Sea. The operation successfully achieved their goals thanks to God and the injuries were accurate and direct. The Yemeni armed forces continue to carry out their military operations in support of and support the oppressed Palestinian people. And to confront the American-British aggression against our country, which comes in support of the Israeli Zionist enemy, to continue its crimes and aggressions against the Palestinian people. And the support operations will not stop until the aggression stops and the siege on the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip is lifted. And you know, goes on there again. Talking about Allah. And so, you know, this is a video that surfaced. And it, it shows what looks to be a direct strike on a ship. We were trying to make out what the numbers of the ship was. Now, this is definitely not an aircraft carrier. Um, this is the Eisenhower. You know, there's not a lot above the plane of the landing strip for the planes. Uh, when you look at a aircraft carrier, there's just not a lot of structure up there. Now, this is a destroyer, and so this is the USS Gravely, which, according to um, USNI, is the one that is operating in the Red Sea with the Eisenhower. It's an Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer, DDG 107. Now, it was interesting because we can kind of see uh, the 107, as you see the 107 here, and there's 107 on the backside. We could kind of make that out, and um, we did play with the, a still of it. As you can see, this is. You know, again, a very, very controversial um, film that's come out. Numerous sources have been quoting this and, and maybe misunderstanding, uh, misinterpretation of what's being said because people have just laughed like this saying, sorry, that's not the Ike. No, it's not the Ike, but it very well may be the Gravely. Um, and, you know, again, when you listen to what the Yemeni officials said, it sounded l like they targeted the Eisenhower. I'm not sure if he really said that they hit the Eisenhower. Did say the mission was successful. But when they talked about the destroyer, they mentioned uh, direct hits. So, you know, we were playing with this, and, and it does kind of look like we could kind of make out a 7 and maybe a 0 and a 1. Is this DDG? Um, the other thing, too, is the structure up here seems m bigger, more solid, but otherwise this still, it could be a destroyer. So there's always tons of deception and tons of lie and warfare. Every side lies. So you can't, um, you know, you really can't trust what anybody says. Uh, although, as we'll, we'll show you guys, and give us your opinion. Do you, do you think that it's the Gravely? Because, again, he said the Gravely. Um, the other thing, too, that really, really hits me, and this is why I'm so curious, is I shared with you guys, um, before the first strike happened, I picked up 
the USS Truman. It was like somebody was saying to me, um, USS Truman. USS Truman. Yeah, you know, it's like, why did that pop into my head? And then when I looked at the USS Truman's info, it's preparing to replace these two ships. It, it's, it's preparing to go over there and lead a new Navy strike group, which would replace the Eisenhower and the Gravely. And the picture th that they gave me was what I would take to be the um, Truman coming to the area because I was just given a picture of it on the water with the sun setting in the back. It, the sun sets in the west, so I'm thinking it's on its way. And for whatever reason, they were pointing this out. I don't know yet why, but there's something to it. <laughs> How it will manifest, I don't know. Um, they did succeed in, in taking down an MQ-9 drone um, at also, as you see here, the Houthi. Now, the thing to realize is we could laugh all day over the firepower of the Houthis, but you have to realize at this point in time, when you're talking the Houthis, you're also talking Russia and China. That's a big difference there. That's an absolute big difference. And this has been planned, again, for a very, very long time. So, you know, you have here an LOL. This is Richard Medhurst. He's an independent journalist. He's a British independent journalist based at the UN. He says, LOL, the U.S. can't believe their state-of-the-art ship got hit by the Yemeni resistance using ballistic and cruise missiles. He says Yemen never lies in their press briefings, so he's inclined to believe them. This is reminiscent of the Hezbollah blasting and totaling of an Israeli ship in 2006. Uh, because, again, one of the things in war is to always feign strength when you're weak, and then you also want to do just the opposite. Pretend that you're weak when you're strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think you could really function without the ability to tell a lie in a war. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean... But it does make sense. Um, I, it, it all could fold together in, in different ways. It all could come together in different ways. So uh, hopefully it's nothing catastrophic. Hopefully this is just another nothing burger. But it does seem to have created some really big splashes. I mean, the only problem with this is, you know, I tend to go against everything what the mainstream is telling me. If they're telling me this happened then I don't believe it. But they're telling me this thing didn't happen. So am I to believe it? it it's not It's not easy. And something inside of me tells me that um, we're definitely not being told the whole story. Yeah, Cindy was picking up that there's some sort of truth here. Um, and, and another friend, too, that has a good, strong intuition. Same thing. Um, the other coincidence is, uh, well... Here you go. I mean, they have one of these attached. No such attack occurred. <laughs> yeah, U.S. defense uh, it, officials told Reuters they're not aware of any attack, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Shortly afterward, the attack that never happened, the commanding officer posted a series of tweets showing the current events on the ships. Now, that could, those tweets, you know, the, those could be completely taped, but then it also might be that the Eisenhower is perfectly fine. And it really was the gravely that was gravely injured. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because that's what it seems to me anyway. That's my inkling, but I wouldn't be surprised uh, if the Eisenhower had some damages as well. There's a couple of other interesting things, too. There was a cargo ship that was hit by the Houthis that has been slowly sinking that did sink. Uh, it went totally under. And then the other thing, too, is the fact that uh, the Eisenhower is actually slated to be mothballed at, at some point in the not too distant future. But, you know, again, with the war coming, uh, will it be moth well, mothballed? Probably not. But would it be perhaps, you know, used as a, uh, you know, a tool <laughs> to provoke a response because they're going to total it anyway? You know, it, maybe, you know, again. It's all very interesting as we watch this grand theater. And it's amazing what kitties, especially little kitties, can keep themselves occupied with. He wonders what it's going to do next. That's a crazy thing. That is a crazy cute thing. Adorable. Adorable. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.